Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on configuring a spin button on a user form in Microsoft Excel. The spin button is sometimes referred to as a spinner or a spinner button. And it is a control that has two arrows. They can point left or right or up or down, depending on how they're configured. So I have here a workbook with a couple worksheets. And I'm going to focus on this worksheet named data. It has some fictitious data as participants and some pretest and post-test scores. And I've configured this user form that allows me to scroll through the participants one at a time using a spinner button and see the pretest and post-test scores associated with the active participant with the selected cell. Additionally, say for example here I move to record 1009, I can change the value. So say I realize that the post-test score here is not supposed to be 41, or say I'm updating this record with new scores, it's actually 39. Now when I move to the next record, it updates the post-test to 39. So say I move to 100 or 1011, and similarly I want to change the pretest, make that 44. Whether I move up or down, it will have made that change to 44. So the spinner button is convenient for moving through data quickly, and the, of course the text boxes are convenient for updating records as needed. So I'm going to close this user form and I've set up another uh, button here that opens up this user form that only has the labels and just two text boxes. So I'm going to build this main form 2 into a form that functions like main form. So by clicking Alt-F11, you can move to the code view. And you can see I have the user form under construction. This user form has the background color changed to blue, a couple labels, and a couple text boxes added to it. And the default font was changed to Times New Roman 12. So you can see down here for sheet 1, which is data, there's a subroutine to open the original form, which is named main form, and a subroutine to open the user form one, which is this blue one here. If I go back to the worksheet, this rectangle is associated with the open form and this one with the open form two. And the way you associate is just by assigning macro, selecting open form two, and clicking OK. Moving back to the code view, I'm going to need to add a spinner button to this user form. So it's spin button, as it's labeled here. I'm going to just drag and drop this on. Now notice, as I've kind of pulled it vertically from where I started, it arranges the spinner button so that uh, one button's pointed up and the other one's pointed down. So if you drag the corner over horizontally, it'll arrange it the way I have it in the other user form. So this is the way I'm going to use it because uh, this looks more like a previous to next uh, button arrangement. So I'm going to resize so it fits nicely onto the user form. And then I want to start adding code. I'm going to right click on the user form and select view code. And you can see it has a user form click empty subroutine here. I'm going to add an initialize subroutine and delete the click one. So the initialize command will run, whatever's in, in the subroutine will run when the user form is initialized. 
And really there's only two things that you want done when this form initializes. Um, one is to populate the pretest in the pretest text box, which is text box one, and the other is to populate the post test in text box two. So the name of this user form is user form one, text box one dot value equal to. Now since we're going to be selecting the participant ID, we're going to have to offset from the active cell value. So that'll be active cell dot offset, and it'll be one column to the right. So it'll be zero rows, one column, and then value. So to set up text box two, I'm just going to copy the first line of code and paste, and then change text box one to two and the offset moves to from 1 to 2. So much easier than retyping that code. So now let's move back over to the worksheet. Now here I need to remember to select a participant. That's how this user form is designed to work. So I'm going to select participant 1002 and you can see it populates the pretest and post-test values in when the user form is initialized. Now it's worth noting here that if I did not have user form before text box here, this would still work. But I wanted to show you how you could uh, put the object, the user form object in, and then the text box object after it. So the next subroutine I'm going to add is one that will be used in the spinner button up and down uh, subroutines. And I'm going to call it update. And what it's going to do, it's going to change text box 1 and text box 2 to whatever the user updates the value to. So again, since this is going to be offset, we can copy this part here from initialize, active cell 0, 1 value. And this will equal text box one value. So really whether you change it or not, it's going to update it. And then I'll copy and paste this and offset zero rows two columns. That'll be equal to text box two. So now I want to add the subroutines that are activated when the spinner button is clicked up or down. So I'm going to select spin button 1, which is that control there. And of course the default is change. First I'm going to add spin up. And the first thing I'm going to do is call update. That has to occur first because we want to update before we do anything else. And to call one subroutine from another, it's just call. So it's call update. Now the spin up will move the section one row down. So we're going to want to go active cell offset one row, zero columns, and then select. So this will select the next row down. And then of course we want to display the values again. Well that's pretty easy, it's already down here. So we'll copy in text box one, value equals the active cell offset by a column, and we'll copy in text box two. And that's all you need to do for spin up and then I'll add spin down. And spin down is actually fairly straightforward. You copy everything that's in spin up, paste it in spin down, and really there's only one change. Uh, instead of an offset of one, it's going to be negative one because you'll be moving in the opposite direction.
And then with this empty subroutine here, I'm just going to delete that. So moving back over, say I select participant 1005. You can see that's 50, 52. When I click spin down, which would be to the left, you can see it moves toward the top of the worksheet and updates the value. When I click the spin up button, you can see it moves down and updates uh, the values in these te text boxes. And then if I want to change a value, say I want to change the 51 here to 55, it makes that change. Similarly, if I want to change the, the 44 here to say 45 and go the other direction, it's going to make the update either way. It's calling that update subroutine uh, when I move up or when I move down. So one thing to watch out for here is that the left is spin down and the right is spin up. Uh, yet when you click the left, you move up the worksheet. And when you click the right, you move down. So I want to show you what will happen if we change the orientation of the spinner button. So I'll close this and select the control and you can see the properties come up. And you can, the orientation now is set to auto, but you can change it to vertical. So they have an arrow pointed up and arrow pointed down. Of course, this design, you probably want to expand this out a little bit and make the spinner button a little larger. So if you wanted to use it in this format, so click back over to the worksheet. We have 1011 selected. You can see now, by clicking the up arrow, it's actually going the opposite way. Than what would be expected uh, from a user's point of view. This is easy enough to correct, just going back into the code. For spin down, simply change it to 1, and for spin up, the offset would be negative 1. So we go back again on 1011. Now you can see it functions as a user would expect it to. I hope you found this video on configuring the spin button control on a user form to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.